Everyone, welcome to Oz by Drone. I'm Greg, and he's John in the background. And I'm John. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Welcome, indeed. <laughs> it's another week, and uh, the technology's holding it together. We're going to have some fun today. We've got some cool news stories. and uh, But before we get into any news, John, what's happening in your world? Well, it's been a busy week. Been out to Dubbo again. Uh, and uh, doing some more survey work. We've been watching the registration is about to come in any day now. We've got two days, uh, and we've been pushing towards drone registration for commercial operators here in Australia. And I haven't seen a Mavic 3 yet, and it is the 26th of September. So who knows what might happen today, what DJI might release. Um, I believe they're still going to release something today. So let's see. But don't forget, we're, we're in the time machine in Australia and today is already tomorrow, but uh, we haven't seen it yet. So it's not today after all. But anyway, all those things aside. It doesn't look like it. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. You know, DJI, it's an interesting time in the market with all the stuff that's happening in the US. I don't know that they're kind of ready for it, but that's just my kind of view. But, you know, we'll talk about that during the show today. Let's get started. As always... Oz by Drone News is brought to you by Air Data UAV. Is your drone healthy or about to surprise you on your next flight? Don't wait to find out. Discover information under the hood and review the early signs of problems before you take off again. Use discount code OzbyDrone20 for a 20% discount. There is a link in the description to the Air Data website. And uh, Grumpy, I, I, I don't know what to say. I've been interrupted in my show. Let's just see who it is. Sounds like Blade's turning to me. Hello. Oh. Yes, we're live with Ken Aaron. G'day, Ken. Hey, Greg, I'm so sorry. I lost track of time. I'm in Memphis. Okay. Okay. Uh, you, know. we, well, you want me to call them? Yeah, we're live. Um, I'll tell you what, um, we'll go and do some of the news and maybe at about a uh, quarter past the hour or 20 past the hour, jump in. I'll um, pop you an email. In fact, Grumpy will pop you an email with the link to join the show then. How does that okay, sound? We're gonna yeah, let's go. We're going to change locations. Uh, I'm uh, doing a fun thing here in Memphis. Can you see Memphis? Oh, yeah. Look at the bridge. The bridge is down. Look at that bridge. That's, okay. Uh, the, what is it? Hernando... It's the Hervé Villachez Bridge. Anyway, I'll call, I'll call you back. Uh, switch locations. Okay. I'll talk to you shortly. Bye-bye. Bye. See you. I'm bye. sorry. I'm late. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. That's... <clears throat> so, yeah, there's our what live... Is it, um, Lloyd with Memphis? You know, it's... Yeah, well... You know, you yeah. either get shot or you're riding a southbound train, aren't you? Well, yeah. It's just like... <laughs> You know, well, Greg's always interrupting my show like that, so it's about time he'd be interrupted too. So <laughs> yeah, I got to just find out if yeah. I got Ken's email address on this. Well, let's do this. Computer. I'm going to start the first story, and you go and have a look, go and ahead. we'll talk a bit more in a second. So, <clears throat> right up at the beginning, we've got some winning photographs. Um, the first photograph we're going to see, a shark with a heart, has won the Drone Photo Awards for 2020. This amazing photo shows a school of salmon forming the shape of a heart whilst a shark watches on. And this has scooped this year's top prize in the 2020 edition of the Drone Photo Awards. 
Um, Love Heart of Nature is the title of the shot by an Australian photographer, Jim Pico, and he won the award announced on 21st of September. Some other notable entries included. Number two, Need a Push. An Alien Metropolis, number three. Number four, Closed for Business. Number five, A Lack of Social Distancing with the Rays there. Number six, The Salt Mountains of the Earth. Number seven, I'm in the middle of a chain reaction. Number eight, Just Keep Swimming. Number nine, In the Pink. And number 10, The Red Hot Chili Peppers, where you actually see a bunch of people literally sorting chili on the ground there in the middle of the field. Some great photographs there, all taken with drones. And uh, for for people that want to have a look at that in more detail, the link to all of our news stories, as always, is in the description for the video. But some nice shots there. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Well done, everybody. Um, Some great things there. We'll have a look them up and get the full res ones uh, back and have a look at them. Well done. Absolutely. Um, Our number, by the way, did you find Ken's email address, Grumps? Well, I got the uh, Ken Heron at Ken Heron uploads at gmail.com. Okay. We'll do the next story. And while the video is playing, I'll go and send him an email directly. So number yeah, two, right. yeah. uh, this one is a seed project, uh, literally. Australian-based drone technology company Dendra Systems recently raised $10 million in Series A funding round with plans to expand its work wor- worldwide. The company announced a mission in 2017 to plant 1 billion trees a year by drone using its unique seed planting drones, which could plant 100,000 trees a day. Certainly good yeah. to see um, an Australian project, wow, um, that's good. you know, picking up $10 million in funding and certainly a, a worthy use of drone technology. We've got a Yeah, that's bit. excellent. I, um, I see the EB there. The EB? And that was probably a, a way to measure the effectiveness. EB, okay. yeah. You could use the multi-rotor <clears throat> to, to probably distribute the seeds. Mm-hmm. And then the EB would um, fly over and, and be able to easily map um, the effect on the vegetation, even monitor the seedlings or weeds or so forth. That's pretty clever. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as we move from vegetation, now we're going to move into the criminal underworld. And I'll just press my magic button there to do something like that. Our third story, Amazon's Ring introduces a security camera. We're going back camera. to Lloyd, are we? No. Nope. You said criminal underworld. That's what he's referring to. <laughs> By the way, John. Thank you. S- sorry, the um, th- that that joke took a little bit of time to sink in. It kind of, you know, it's a. It's not like fire. it had a lot to seep through. It had a. Thanks. It had a long fuse on that cracker. <laughs> boom, boom. Anyway, Ring has introduced a new security camera drone, the yep. Always Home Camera. The Ring Always Home camera is actually a small drone and it can um, patrol from room to room and keep an eye on your property and belongings. The drone flies autonomously throughout your house without you being able to control the unmanned aircraft, so you can't control it. However, you can watch the drone fly and access the live feed on the Ring app. Oh. 
do you think of that? <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, we've been seeing this technology being with the companies. They're doing a great job with it. I think it's going to um, probably be uh, quite a normal thing for people to have in their houses and their yards, a security drone. Works with a Wi-Fi system. Um, you, know, you can watch it on your phone. I mean, lots of people now can very easily get um, secure cameras that they they have around the house. A couple of both, um, and you know they're they're pretty much easy to get and easy to work on. So why not add drone to the mix? Great idea. I tell you the one thing that worries me about it though. If um, I was an insurance company and I was providing an insurance policy, and um, someone told me that this camera was going to pop up unattended, uncontrollable as an autonomous drone, and it's not under any regulations of your local regulator because, as you know, CASA and the FAA are not going to regulate what happens inside your house, inside your airspace. And let's say a bad guy does mm. get in. Let's say a bad guy does get in and uh, he gets prop injuries. I know it's got that shape around it, you know, to try and um, minimise that, but... How would the insurers actually feel about that? Interesting question. Yeah. <coughs> well, it'd be, very, it'd be very different here, Greg, to various parts of the states. And, and Grumpy will tell you that you have a right to um, defend your property if someone's on your property. Um, I understand anyway. I mean, we don't, you know, uh, the same in terms of, of, of being able to defend your property and so forth. What, what would go on there, Grumpy? Well, the same thing. If they break in, if they're inside the premises, no holes barred. You can shoot them. You can chop them up with a weed whacker. You can hit them with a drone. It doesn't matter. They <clears throat> broke in uninvited into your house. We can take whatever measures we see necessary, at least in the state of Oklahoma. In California, I think you have to you know, hug and kiss them and make them feel better. But other than that... <laughs> From what I recall of some of our laws over here, we actually do have obligations to maintain a safe environment for your local burglar who's trying to rob you blind. You've got to keep the property safe for them as well as yourself. So that's the reason I asked the question. But just an interesting thought, but some really cool technology. I love the idea. Um, it's a shame that they don't have any yeah. controllability and the fact that it is totally autonomous only. Um, but nevertheless, a cool idea. Mm. Let's move on. We'll go to story number four. Um, Elroy's Air Chaparral VTOL cargo drone has won the gold award in the Industrial Designers Society of America 2020 International Design Excellence Awards. As the world becomes more connected, logistics has to adapt to keep up with demand. Today, more than 1 billion people live in communities outside the reach of reliable roadways. In other places, traffic congestion is continuing to grow at an alarming rate. At Elroy Air, we are working to solve these problems with autonomous flying cargo systems that don't depend on ground infrastructure. Introducing the Chaparral, a hybrid electric aircraft capable of carrying up to 300 pounds of cargo over 300 miles without the need for airports. The Chaparral's vertical takeoff and landing capabilities mean that every loading dock, every parking lot, and every flat surface is a potential delivery location. Our cargo containers are separate from the aircraft. Once a cargo container is packed, it is set outside for pickup. The Chaparral taxis over the container, picks up the cargo, then takes off vertically. The vehicle transitions to wing-based flight and recharges its battery en route to its destination. When the chaparral lands at the destination, the system will deliver the container and pick up another for the return flight. We believe that extending the reach of Express Logistics can improve the quality of life around the world. This is a rare moment where technology can leapfrog today's infrastructure challenges. The chaparral can connect the dots between people, places, and goods in ways that were not possible before, delivering rapidly to warehouses, hospitals, and communities in need around the world. There was one thing I picked up while watching that, John, and um, I don't know exactly how they're doing it, but did you notice the recharging while in flight? Did you pick that up? 
Yeah, that's um, yeah, that is. So the hybrid technology allows you, if, if it's got a petrol engine on the back, it's running a small generator um, connected to the to the um, petrol motor, and so it just ch- recharges the batteries that are used for vehicle flight. So that sort of technology is being seen a little bit more and more now with the larger aircraft. I mean, the cargo bay of that thing was as big as a canoe. Um, mm. You know, it's like that 300 pounds of cargo, 150 kilos of cargo is a serious lifter. Um, so you would use, you know, a fair bit of, uh, of energy and you don't want to carry batteries just for the vertical lift. So, yeah, recharge it. The other one, the batteries become more or less of a safety item because if, you, if you're if gaining um, power from the uh, motor, the, the rear motor of the generator, then, of course, you could you could use that as well to fly. But what, my guess is the petrol engine stops before it lands and that would be a big safety thing. And so it goes to battery power as it, as it come, transitions to the landing. Um, fantastic stuff. That's a, a big deal. And, and, you know, wow, it's a great looking technology, but, you know, the, everybody that watches this show will, will see the challenges in it. Um, you know, a large UAV like that, it needs flight corridors. It, um, there's a lot of, lot of water go, got to go under the bridge before you could get that thing operating on a wider scale. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, Mike Miller asks for it. You know, Mike, uh, good, good. Um, yeah, Mike asks if it'll drop off his kid at school, which is a interesting, amusing question. And the answer for the short term is probably not just yet. But, <laughs> um, while we're here, actually, a couple of quick thank yous. Wayne King, hi Greg and team. Um, P.S. and Ken Heron. Uh, nice to have the and Ken Heron. Hopefully he'll be there shortly. Metro Drones, happy, uh, hey, happy Friday, Oz and company. Thanks uh, also for your super chat, Metro. Um, look, here's an interesting question about that, that aircraft, though. Um, do you think there's enough energy in gliding energy to actually charge? And how much range could you extend while gliding without using the petrol engine? Is there is there an economy that that would actually work aerodynamically? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So um, just to go through that really simply, you'd have a variometer uh, aboard the aircraft, which basically measures the available lift, extra available lift. So if you're flying in a thermal that's carrying the aircraft upwards and it's able to support the weight, the variometer can tell you that. Uh, engine shuts down, it just keeps going. Uh, it keeps riding it like on a, on a wave on a surfboard. And then, of course, you'd have downdrafts as well where you'd have to, the engine would start up again. So this aircraft's mm-hmm. obviously got a starter, a petrol engine. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you wouldn't, uh, once it's in forward flight, there's no reason to fire up the uh, the vertical propellers at all. Uh, you just don't need them. Once the thing's going along, you know, anything up to, uh, you know, 30 or 40 metres per second. That wouldn't be a slow aeroplane either. That, that sort of weight and that wing, you know, the aircraft's moving along fairly briskly. Um, yeah. But, yeah, uh, I mean, there's a, a lot in it, you know. It's dual autopilots. It needs it needs a lot of redundancy. And good on them. I, I say fantastic see startup companies developing that technology. But I, I think I said here a couple of years ago, um, you guys will remember that VTOLs are going to what we are going to see in the future. This is where it's going. Um, any type of real work needs to be done. A multi has just got the limited range, limited lift, uh, just can't, hasn't got the legs to do any real work. So here we are, they're, they're, they're on. Um, and you can buy some very nice kits too if you want to get into the technology and try it out. They're very, very uh, simple. The, the Pixhawk Cube manages um, um, that sort of situation hybrid with four lifting propellers and a rear propeller. Also tilt motors, which are even more efficient. So there's lots of scope there for, um, for for playing with the technology you'd like to get into it. Um, yeah, fun. Okay, fun aircraft. I've got a quick question for Grumpy just out of interest. Is um, John's audio glitching for you or is it just me? No, it's uh, he's he's kind of glitching in and out. Okay. So, yeah. <clears throat> it's and not it's, too bad at the moment, but it's noticeable. But that's all right. We'll continue for now. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Speaking of audio, the next topic is actually audio drones. Will drones ever record audio? They may not have the means to do it now. The main reason, of of course, is that even if drones did have a microphone, you'd only be hearing the sound of the props. But what if that could change? With drones becoming more of a mainstream tool for videography, will they ever sport a microphone to capture the audio of the places they fly? Um... 
I think it will come eventually, maybe in about five to 10 years when they figure out the technology to do that, and it'll probably be an AI solution. Um, but with that being the case, um, I think it will eventually happen. Let's just have a look at a couple of videos um, of some audio with drones in flight. Now these four clips you can see on the page that we've got linked in the description. We won't watch the entire clips, but that one is a really, really good example of someone where they've combined the original aircraft noise and they've added the noise of the the jet ski in down below as well and some wind noise, some water noise. Let's go to the next clip. This one, no, no audio from the drone itself, but some really, really good um, overlaid audio. And the next one. This one is really cool. Now I was hoping to have Ken on at this time because obviously as a sound guy and a radio guy for many years, having a look at some of this, this is really, really nice. But do you think we'll ever reach that, uh, that end target, John, of getting rid of the the drone noise, being able to filter that out. Uh, let me get this on again. Speaking of audio. <laughs> Your mic was on, I think, John, but you've Your just muted on, yourself. <laughs> Is okay, this thing on? I'm, I'm on my back. On my back. You're back. Yeah. Uh, is this thing on? Tap. Um, I think I think that um, noise cancelling technology is the, what's been applied here. So you um, obviously uh, able to filter out um, a, a certain frequency. So you just drill down on what frequency that the um, the rotors are making and and take it out. Are used in modern turboprops these days. You know they're always quite noisy when you're riding in a a Saab or a, a turboprop aeroplane, now they have in the speakers in, in the aircraft, they're able to use noise cancelling inside the cabin. Same as your noise cancelling headsets. Uh, it's just an algorithm. So, yeah, definitely uh, on the cards to do that with um, with multi-rotors, no problem. Yeah. Look forward to it. I think there's a lot of good opportunities out there. Now, at this point, we've reached the point where I would normally say hello to our guest. Um, if anyone is able to call Ken for anyone who knows him, please do so. And in the meantime, we'll continue with a couple of stories, see how we go and just improvise. Starting with our next story, of course, um, COVID has been something that we've all been painfully aware of. And Walmart, we've had a look at that last week, but now they're actually confirmed they're using it to deliver COVID-19 tests. They launched a pilot drone pr uh, delivery program on Tuesday. Um, of, uh, I think it was last week, that will drop off the COVID-19 test to homes within a one mile radius of the North Las Vegas area. Three, this drone is delivering COVID-19 supplies to a nearby hospital. Seeing the first flight was exhilarating. The drones will carry about four pounds of personal protective equipment and fly up to 30 miles round trip. Airspace is clear. Previously, the FAA only allowed drone deliveries within two miles. To be standing in one of our major hospitals and see a drone drop exactly where it was planned to drop, PPE, and watching our public safety officer pick it up and carry it in, that was very satisfying. Novant Health is a network of 700 locations, including 15 hospitals. During the pandemic, the group is rethinking how to distribute medical supplies. Everyone here has heard about the PPE challenges. We are fortunate in that we have a good supply, but one of the things we'd like to do is be able to deploy that PPE when it's needed in a more surgical fashion. We can do that through drone-based delivery. 
To make drone deliveries a reality, Novant partnered with Zipline, a California drone delivery company that's been operating in Africa for years. We operate serving about 25 million people in East and West Africa. We deliver 160 different medical products to hospitals and health facilities on demand using drones. Today, Zipline delivers around 75% of the national blood supply of Rwanda. We've been working with Zipline for over a year, putting our toe in the water related to drone-based delivery of PPE, clinical supplies, et cetera. When the crisis started, we were able to very quickly pivot and accelerate some of the work. The goal is to so efficiently distribute medical supplies like masks and vaccines across Novant's Interesting network of hospitals to, um, and clinics. But the company says that goal is still a long way away. Can you turn away. that off, please, my now, producer? There we go. Interesting to have a look at that. Um, we, we saw it last week and I was a little bit skeptical of it last time. Um, but they've actually got to the point where they're, they're doing something useful with it. Sure, it's in a limited capacity and they're doing it in car parks of hospitals, but will it ever be real beyond that? Oh, I think, that, I think it is, mainly, you know, using the blended technology that's available. Um, I don't think the catapult will be around forever. As I said, you know, that's a that, look at the way that thing works. I mean, it, we have had a catapult a couple of years ago that we launched, um, you know, Delta Wing aircraft off rather than hand launching. It's a big step. We figured that if you're going to have higher payloads, once you reach the limit, oh, there's Ken in the back. Yeah, yeah we're going to go. Ken. Let's say hello. We'll go and throw Ken up. Here we go. Do we have audio? Hello, Kenny. Hey, can you hear us? We can. Welcome Excellent. to being the welcome to being the roving reporter live on the scene. Where are you, Ken? Reporting live from Memphis, Tennessee. And where? Okay. Mud, Mud Island Park in Memphis, Tennessee. Mud Island Park. I can report Park. to you right now that all is well. Right? Yes. Okay. That's James. Hello, James. Who's I, James? I keep I keep trying, he lives here, I keep trying to social distance, but he keeps coming back to me like a moth to the flame. So basically it's like one of those things where you, you're watching the TV news reporter and there's this guy waving behind. Yeah, yeah, he's photobombing me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's so see can if I can't get you a shot of the, of the city skyline, maybe over here. We're on top of a parking garage and, uh, 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 maybe not. Well, this is a terrible parking garage. Hey, you can see a little bit of it over there. Oh, you can see the Raymond James building peeking out right there. And but the, the cool part is the Bass Pro Shops uh, pyramid. That that green light right there, right, where, 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 over there over there, go. there, right? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, Ken, thanks for being with us today. Now, I did have a few of the news stories that I was going to get you to comment on today. Firstly, the concept of audio. You're an audio guy. So when right. do you think do you think noise cancelling will advance enough to be able to record audio from a drone and get rid of the, the noise of the props? No. You don't think so? Uh, well, I mean... Actually, prop noise is pretty consistent. As long as the noise is pretty consistent, you can do a version of that right now in Adobe Audition, and uh, you can get the the noise removal tool and uh, get a sample of the noise that you want to remove, and then remove it from a file. But on the fly, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Okay. There's a the city. <laughs> okay. So, what are you doing over there anyway? What? We've got a little uh, projector that I had on my channel that uh, it's the it's the Go 200s. It's about this big and we're about to go to a building. In fact, that building right there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to we're going to duct tape the projector to the drone's leg and then fly the drone up and project a video of me on the building waving to everybody in Memphis while filming it from a second drone. Okay. It's something different. It's something different. It's, it's an ambitious plan, but I think we can do it with James help here. Cause James, he's an expert aerialist. Isn't that right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He can also juggle seven chainsaws. Isn't that right? <laughs> so basically, so basically, Ken, you're trying to get a big version of yourself on, on the side of the building. Is this a case of um, projection size envy? That's right. Uh, you know what everybody says. The more Ken, the better. Isn't that, that's what people say, right? Uh, anyway, <laughs> hey, um, I've got. I was I'm, gonna, I'm, I was gonna um, project an image of of you up on the building, but uh, your your skull would reflect too much of the light. <laughs> Love you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, uh, I was, I was am I still on? We're thing. gone. And he hung up on me. Damn it. He hung up on me. No, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Ken. Um, I'm, I'm going to okay. ask you one more quick question. I'll tell you, um, I, I'm going to play one story for you and get you yeah. to quickly comment on that. And if you get a chance when you get doing, doing your flying and stuff, if I'm still live, I'd love to see some of that. But let's just quickly go to our next story, All which right. is this one. Amazon are building a flight simulator to ensure that their drones don't crash. The plan is to use drones to replace standard delivery options available today and in turn reducing costs. Amazon Prime Air have been working on this and basically they've got a drone that you, they're going to strap to a chair, put TV screens in front of it for its optical sensors and also simulate um, the inputs from to the IMU and the other sensors that are going into the drone, but have the flight computer and the programming responding to all of those simulated inputs. What do you think of that? There is a museum in Birmingham, Alabama. It's a flight museum, a bunch of old airplanes in it. And they have a flight simulator from the 40s that the Air Force used and the Navy used to train their pilots and looking at that now it just it's just a box with a bunch of pulleys and analog stuff in there it just looks silly and i imagine in about 10 15 years time that same thing that you just showed me will look equally as silly <laughs> fair enough but it's it's an innovative idea rather than going and flight testing um above real people it's it's a good way for them to go and tune their software i think in the long term Sure, sure. But remember, what looks innovative now looks silly later. <laughs> Fair enough. And that, look, and, and, and that is true about me. As innovative as I look right now, catch me in 10 years. <laughs> well, we'll look back on this moment and have a look at that really big Ken on the side of the building and think, why did he do that? Yeah, yeah. You, you have bail money, right? Uh, what? What? <laughs> Nothing. Okay, we'll talk to you later. <laughs> okay, come back if you're able to, if we're still up. I'll talk to you soon, Ken. Will do. Okay, bye. See you, See Ken. You, Ken. How do you, bye. How do you hang up this damn thing with the thing and the hay and the what? And the, uh, <laughs> eh, I feel like grumpy. Eh. <laughs> and he called me old. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> it was not the version of Ken that I was expecting to have today, but um, I think we got our dates and times mixed up and he was out in the field, but glad that he joined us nonetheless. And uh, let's go into our next story. And at that moment, John disappeared off the screen. Hmm. If you can hear me, I'm gonna, I reckon I'm going to have to bail out because I've got a lot of issues. <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry. Okay, I can hear you and you I understand. Okay? I can hear you and I know that there were some okay. things you were dealing with beforehand. So I'll let you deal with that and I'll put Grumpy in the hot seat without any notice. Yeah, well, I kind of saw that coming about 15 minutes ago. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> G'day, Grumps. And by the way, Grump, do me a favor. If anyone wants to come in and say hi, throw the rendezvous link in. Will do. Throw it in the chat. The next story we've got today is a busted droner. The Federal Aviation Administration said it is looking into the report of a drone after it flew into a field at Wrigley Field, briefly landing before taking off again during the fifth inning of the baseball game at Wrigley Field. Fly drone over a stadium during a game. 
Colin Hinkle is a drone operator and owner of Soaring Badger Productions. He says the rules are clear. You can even see the no-fly zones around the airport and the rate for the Sox game today on the drone flying map. The FAA says that unless authorized, there's no flying of any kind over a stadium an hour before and after a game in a three-mile radius and below 3,000 feet. The problem... And the FAA isn't patrolling the streets uh, looking for people flying drones. But it couldn't be more obvious. A sign right outside of the stadium says unmanned aerial vehicles are not welcome. If you're using a drone for fun in Chicago, a good rule of thumb. The city doesn't want you flying over people without their consent or over private property. The problem is, is that again, if you can go buy something like this at a Best Buy down the street, more than likely Best Buy employees aren't going to tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Why would anybody waste a good battery flying over a White Sox stadium to begin with? Well, there is that, but... Uh... <laughs> I just can't believe that the dude had the, the the cheek to go and land and then wait for the fifth inning and then go take off again and do a little bit more. Yeah, well, you know, nothing was obviously happening in the first four innings, so. <laughs> Maybe he landed the thing and was watching the game from a really good vantage point and then when, it, you know, things were not going so well, oh, let's get out of here. Yeah, that's, yeah. Like uh, I said, waste of a good battery. <clears throat> Thank you, Wayne, for the contribution to Ken's bail money for projecting on the side of the building. Five dollar super chat. Thank you, Wayne. Um, yeah. Okay, let's let's move on. We've got a couple more to go. Next one is a following drone. Let's just quickly throw that up. And this one, this is the Audi Nines, which is essentially two competitions in one, allowing the best free riders and free stylers on bicycles in the world to show off their respective skill sets. But there is another skill set that tops the riders, the pilots flying these drones that have been capturing the action with some pretty top skills. about you grumps but um yeah we've seen a lot of uh, people doing following and certainly where you're going under bridges like that one a couple of moments ago right that's a great flying skill as well as riding skill yeah i mean most people oh. watch this just to have a look at the 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 box but i look yeah. at it to have a look yeah. at the the piloting skills of the people that are following yeah, that's, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm watching the bike scales, I'm having a look for the what the pilot is doing, uh, and wow, he's just, that's really some good, good piloting for sure. Oh. Yeah, the good news is though, by, by doing the course multiple times, you, you'd get your your routine you're, down, you're, you know exactly right. where they're going to be. Muscle memory and all that working, yeah. Yeah. Let's watch one more run. Oh, almost caught him a cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> Under the bridge again. So do you reckon they used a Skydio and um, just strapped on the the follow me beacon with Thingy. them? Uh, I wonder if you could. I wonder if you... Oh, there we go. We've got a stack. We'll leave that alone there for now. Let's stop the video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I okay. I don't know if it would be that. That looks like a uh, Cinemoop or a, somebody that's a... <clears throat> uh, a good FPV, FPV pilot. pilot. Yeah, yeah, a great FPV pilot. So that doesn't yeah. look like because Skydio is is good, but I th I feel that it's probably a little more hesitant, a little slower moving, and that was some quick moving, and that looked like it, pure FPV. Yeah, but uh, I think it'd be an interesting one to go and get them to try. If you didn't have that bridge to go under for everything else, Mike Miller saying a Skydio won't do that. Yeah, um, that's wow, yeah. that pilot that's is on it. Too. Yeah, it won't, but it'll be interesting to watch it try. 
I'd love to see someone yeah. at, a, at a competition like that go and get it out and have the beacon with the, the rider. Yeah, Mike anyway. Miller says FPV all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Because that bridge shot would be hard for uh, the Skydio to do. So, you know, it just doesn't, you know, I yeah. don't think I'd lose connection going under there probably. Okay. Uh, we got a couple more quick stories, and I'd love to have one or two of our viewers come in and say hello, but um, we'll see if they join us in a moment. In the meantime, this story here, um, German airports are going to build passenger drone infrastructure. Passenger drone manufacturer Lilium has partnered with German airports Dusseldorf and Cologne Bonn to build VTOL passenger drone infrastructure. Lilium plans to bring its fully electric five-seater aircraft to market by 2025. The partnership would eventually also allow Lilium to deploy its passenger drones throughout the country. It takes off vertically, and when it takes off, all the engines are like in a rocket pointing downwards to lift the aircraft vertically into the air. And now the plane is in the middle of transition flight, and the engines finally reach a horizontal direction. And in this direction, all the lift is generated by the wings, and the engines just provide thrust like in a normal aircraft. That that what looked like an electric hedge cutter. You know the way the wingtip look. I'm not sure I'd want to fly an electric play that hedge again? cutter. Can we just play the clip again? The aircraft takes off vertically, and when yeah, it takes see? off, all the engines are a, like in a rocket, a hedge trimmer. pointing downwards to lift the aircraft vertically into the air. And now the plane is in the middle of transition flight. Either that or um, the engines a very big shaver. A horizontal direction. <laughs> yeah, there and you in go. This direction, <laughs> yeah. All the lift is generated Electric by shaver the wings, for the jolly and green the engines giant. just provide thrust like in a normal aircraft. <clears throat> yeah, so that's from Lilium, and that's a, certainly not a um, fully marketed product yet, but that's something that's under development. Um, and as they said, five-seater aircraft they want to have in the marketplace by 2025. Right. And I would ride it, you know, once I saw how, it, you know, saw some of the preliminary. I mean, I would not right now. It's just all they did was showing the wing going up and down. They actually haven't showed it out of the showroom, you know, mm. you see it fly once or twice. I'd probably fly in that. Yeah. OK, um, we've got one story left today. We're, we're going to finish a little bit early because, as I said, we were going to have Ken around here for a bit longer. We got our times mixed up. Here's what I'd like to do, though. I do want to invite someone to come in and I'll give away a No Limit Drones license to the first person who comes in. See how easy that is? You don't even have to yeah. be intelligent or witty. Just the first person who comes into the show today <coughs> will win a No Limit Drones license. Obviously, Let's... you don't have to be intelligent because both of us are on here. Yeah, absolutely. We've got one more quick story, delivery drones. Now, we've seen a lot of delivery drones before. Drone maker Valancey has secured $50 million to expand its drone delivery service for urgent medical supplies and future COVID-19 vaccines. The new funding round of $50 million brings the total funding to $75 million to support its vertical takeoff um, middle mile drone delivery platform. Now, we've got two video clips. Let's just have a look at some of this. clip as well we'll just put back to back so again we're waiting for the first person to jump in before we finish the show today into rendezvous the link has been pasted into the chat 
and Eden Valley Drones UK, you're in bad. I assume you mean in bed. Hey, I, I've done this show on my road before, so. <coughs> yeah. Looks very much like the other one. Yeah, another VTOL um, large form aircraft. Was that a, uh, a gas engine on the back? If I just quickly go to click on that link. It looked like a fuel engine. I think it is. With It, it took off with electrics and must push forward with the uh, uh, gas engine. Just or maybe that's to charge reading. the battery system. Yeah. I'm just reading Who through knows? the original article to see if it's um, got some details. Can carry payloads of 20 pounds with a combination of maximum sensor payload of up to 10 pounds over a 350 mile range. You're not going to do 350 miles. 50 miles on a battery. Yeah, that's a on fuel. A battery. That's a fuel. Yeah, fuel system. Okay. Cruising speed of but, 75 uh, miles per hour over eight hours. Yeah, no, you're not getting no batteries to do that. Yeah. I mean, that in <clears> itself would be <throat> over 20 pounds. Yeah. Okay, well, we've reached the end of the show, and if no one joins in right now, let's do the quick little end of show information. As always, first of all, before I do, remind you, all of the info in our news comes from dronebook.org. Um, do go and check it out for these and other stories. Um, do click on the links that are in the description for the video or in Dronebook to go and find out more information about these stories. And as always... If you would like to send in some video, send it to upload at gregkunit.com. We don't want to just play news videos. We'd like to have a look at some of your interesting videos as well. Follow us on social media on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and other platforms under Ados by Drone. And if you'd like to send anything physical, our address is 5 slash 127 Princess Highway, Sylvania, New South Wales, 224, Australia. How many people have we got watching in there at the moment, Grumps? Uh... You know, I don't know. I haven't. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Mike Miller well, says, sorry, I don't have a camera. Where do you see how many people? you got to click on that little thing and go over there. And we've got 27 watching now. Of those 27 <coughs> people, surely someone would love to get a copy of No Limit Drones. It's a really good piece of software. Um, that'll Thank enable you, you to do all sorts of stuff with your drone. Well, it looks like, well, Zeb Meat says doesn't have the bandwidth for it, and I know he doesn't. Uh, By the way, the normal price of No Limit <coughs> Drones, just out of interest, I'm having a look, summer sale. I think it's currently 35 euros. Okay. But anyway, No Limit Drones, what it enables you to do is literally take off the limits off your drone and do all sorts of exciting flying with it. We've talked about it before. And uh, if you want to win a copy, maybe next week. We'll see what happens. Let's leave yeah. it there for today, unless you've got any yeah. last words of wisdom. No, I don't. Uh, I was telling people on my Monday show <clears throat> that I would not be doing a Monday show this coming week. Because I thought it was the 27th, which is when I age a little more. And I will be doing my show on Monday because I just won't be doing anybody else's show on Sunday. Because <laughs> that's the day I age some more. On Sunday. On you Sunday, mean, yeah. You mean you didn't age any more today? Uh, well, yeah, but I'm going to age it. I'm going to gain a whole year by Sunday. So you gain a whole year in one day? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go okay. from age this to age that, you know? Yeah. Okay, look, let's leave it there for now. It's been fun as always. It's been interesting having a look at the news of what's happening in the scene. It's been fun having Ken popping in for a few moments and saying hello. Yeah, but we'll it do it all again this time next week. That's all for you today. You need to make sure you put it in his calendar like three months in advance and send weekly updates. <laughs> he um, he's a eclectic individual who. Yeah, I know. 
He's a great guy. Anyway, that's been good. See you next time. Bye-bye for now, everyone.